Welcome to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. This is a station that revolves around the African community in diaspora. Today, always, Houston is the hub. As you know, we bring about the events and occurrences that promote our culture, our traditions, and everything that has to do with Africans. And, but today we are going to be talking about something really spiritual and shed a little light on uh, a misconception and, you know, perhaps a disbelief also of certain things going on in the Apostolic Church. Um, I have with me here, my guest today is Pastor Henry Odeneye. He is the leader of Dagunro Prayer Family. Jesus Christ, of course, is the head of the family. Um, pastor is also the pastor of Yoruba Christian Fellowship. He also is the pastor of the Apostolic Church, South Kirkwood Assembly. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So, b before we dive deep, I, I need you to explain to us what Dagunduro is about. I mean, as a Yoruba guy, I can say Dagunduro is to stop whatever war, That's put right. an halt, That's right. put a halt to whatever war uh, or warfare that is coming. But, you know, maybe you have a better... Um, Definition of what Dagunduru is. Yeah, just as you said, that's Dagunduru. Uh, Dagunduru, the name Dagunduru came out of a prayer meeting. We, the Lord, when I was coming to the United States of America, made it very clear. My son, I'm sending you to America to do something very different. You're going to use your language to praise me, worship me, and pray. It sounded very odd. Mm. Because how can I come to America and then pray? Since it came from God, his ways are not our ways. Right. So, and he gave that name at a prayer meeting through prophetic administration. Prophet came and said, the name of the ministry shall be Dagunduro Prayer Family. Hmm. Given that the coming to America, they speak English here in the United States. That's right. But you're coming to start something mm -hmm. that will be God-focused. Yes, right. Praise, worship, mm -hmm. prayers. Mm -hmm. And you are going to be doing those in Yoruba language, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is one of the Yor languages in Nigeria. That's right. That's what was God told me. It sounded strange when I got the message, but since it came from God, I had to, because the Lord said, go and fish, make f fish, go, we are fishermen as children of God. So go and fish. And the type of fish you want to harvest determines the type of bait you put on your hook. Mm. God told me there are Nigerians out there, there are Yorubas out there, they need to be reached with the language. You have African stores. People go to African stores to shop. Right. They buy gari, they buy fufu. Mm. They eat African food in America, physical food. Mm. So most of us will be eating spiritual food in our native language. And since we started it, there's no, there are no regret at all. The Lord has used that to win souls has we, we use that to win battles, spiritual battles. So no regret at all. No, no. So when, when I'm when I'm in the air, when I'm flying, if I need to render a prayer to God, I always believe I'm much more connected to God when I'm when I pray when, when I say my prayers in mm -hmm. Yoruba. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom will never allow us pray in English growing up, That's and right. she would also read the Bible to us in Yoruba. So mm -hmm. there are some um, pages in the Bible that if you ask me to read it, no matter what you're reading in English, which I understand perfectly, That's right. I will always, you know, it, it makes it, it have more meaning. Um, you know, it has a, a lot of meaning to it when, I, when it's recited in Yoruba. You know, That's maybe right. there's that, that connects using That's your right. local dialect. See, the unfortunate thing is this. If we're not careful, we're going to lose this language. Mm. Entirely, Yoruba. There's no way is going to. Go, there's no way Yoruba is going to die, but we may, at the end of the day, import Yoruba from America. Because if you look at the number of from America, yes, <laughs> the number of universities where Yoruba is taking us a major course. Mm. That is not. That is true. Yes, that not, is true. Not, not less than fifty universities, and unfortunately, back at home, you say no vernacular in this house, mm. no vernacular in this house, and then if we're not careful again. No one will ever study Ifa without Yoruba. It's not possible. Yes, I so mean, a, we, we don't want to think contention in um, people English. from Mexico, from America, they are learning Ifa. So they are forced to learn Yoruba language in order to be able to understand the, Ifa. The Ifa. So yeah. if you are not careful, you lose it. I have nothing against the Ifa using Yoruba language, but we are going to use it to worship our God. Because the translation of Yoruba language, a Bible to Yoruba language, 
generated cost Yoruba alphabet to be generated. It, it is even and deep. It is, it is, it is deep. Ajayi Crowder, a bishop. Bishop Ajayi Crowder, yeah, I remember. Who, who, who translated the, right, Bible the whole Bible from English to, to Yoruba. Yoruba. The only Fadi Babala who want to write anything in Yoruba now should have to give credit to Ajayi Crowder, a Christian. And they will right? have to say Bishop Ajayi Crowder. That's it, Bishop Ajayi Crowder. That's it. So th there's this uh, misconception. You have your own um, fellowship ministry, or yes. ministry, they call mm -hmm. it now, right? But you're also the pastor of the Apostolic the Church. Church. So uh, have you left the Apostolic Church? Or? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, there's been some controversy about it in the past. The fact is this. When I was to start this ministry, I went to the authority of fathers in the Lord in Nigeria and I told them this is the ministry God has committed in my hands I will have to do it in Yoruba and they said well since we have people of other language in the church mm. there's no way you want to use Yoruba to do program they will say Let me, don't mind the use of my language mm -hmm. do you want to Yorubalize the church mm -hmm. I understood. then they said go ahead you can do your ministry it was during the time of Pastor Jemigbo he was the chairman of Lona Pastor Jemigbo said go ahead they prayed over it and they said, God has agreed with you, go and do it. And when Baba came to America, he stood me up in the midst of the congregation, their witnesses, when he said, this, this young, this man, this elder has been given a job to do by God. We approve it. Let him do his ministry. After Baba Jamie, we had Pastor Dr. Ulutola JP as the Lona chairman. He said, no, no problem. The present chairman of Lona, Baba Wujide, happened to be our field superintendent here before he mm -hmm. assumed the position. He's to approve. So I have no problem with the Apostolic Church. I am still a member of the Apostolic Church. I'm a pastor with the Apostolic Church ordained. I was ordained an elder 30 years ago. My mother's, my grandfather's house in Ilashe, in Oshu State, was where the Apostolic Church started. The place is a district center now. Then through me, by the grace of God, when I was an elder, we established three churches, Ajibose Assembly, Obawale Assembly, and then we started one uh, at Muta. In fact, the one of Muta, I donated the two plot of land with a building on it to wow. start Muta Assembly. Wow, so, so you are a core, a core yes, sure, member of, uh, sure. of the um, Apostolic Church. Mm -hmm. and, but now you pastor the South, um, South Kirkwood, Kirkwood Assembly, Assembly. Yes. Here, in here in Houston. Fantastic. So I, I learned there's, um, you're, you're taking Dagunro to yes. UK also. That's true. That's true. Uh, we're having our first revival in the United Kingdom. Uh, by the grace of God, on the 22nd of November, we have a revival and a, a vigil at the Apostolic Church, London, London City. So the Apostolic Church is going to host us there. Uh, it's going to be all Yoruba program and night vigil. And then the following day, Manchester on Saturday, Saturday 23rd, we're going to have Dagundu revival there in Manchester. And then, of course, 24th, we're going to have two services. One service in English at the Apostolic Church, Liverpool. And then in the evening, we have the service in Yoruba, the Apostolic Church, Liverpool. We expect, by the grace of God, ministers on the platform of the Apostolic Church. And we expect my daughter from Finland, Rebecca Orio Fetampio, a, a, a Finnish, a, a white lady who sings in Yoruba. Oh, yeah. Going I, to be I there think I've seen a video of that. And we expect uh, Evangelist Shola Alison also to join us there. Fantastic. So you'll be in London London, London City, city. Manchester, you'll be in Manchester and you'll be in Liverpool. in Liverpool by the grace of God. By God's grace. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be upcoming, you have a tw annual 21 days prayer and fasting. That's true. Yeah, we have a 21. Annually, we, we observe 21 days prayer and fasting based on God's own injunction. Mm. The, the prayer and fasting was set by the grace of God on the, 20, on the uh, 27th of October. And it will run through the 16th of November. We have spe a special books dedicated for the 2021 20, 20, prayer fasting every year. Uh, we have the, the book in Yoruba, the prayer book in Yoruba, and in English. And the title is a reflection of the theme of the 21 days prayer fasting, which is the mercy of God. Anu Olonu. The mercy of God. Of God. Anu Olonu. Olonu. Well, do you have any upcoming events here in Houston? Now, about your Dagunro, Daguduro right. in, in Houston, can you give us a yeah, little Daguduro more information is, on is that? that? 8001 South Kekud Road, Houston, Texas. Aside from Daguduro, is a monthly Yoruba program. And then on Sundays, we, we hold our devotional service in Yoruba language at 8.30. 
Sunday, 8.30 to 10 o'clock. Okay. This is to give room for people, uh, other Christians who have uh, other denominations to be able to be part of their service. Mm. You come in at 8.30 in the morning, we hold the service in Yoruba, 10 o'clock we, you, you leave, go to your church and worship God in English. So you, you're not using that to say you have to come to my church? No, and because but after, the, after the Yoruba it. service, we members of the Apostolic Church hold the English service in the Apostolic Church. We Immediately the after, yes. right. So, so fantastic. So you have uh, the 21 days, uh, annual 21 prayer days prayer and fasting coming up. That's right. You have um, the Dark Munduro program for the UK, UK, which is going to be in London, London, Manchester, and, and Liverpool. Liverpool. Uh, the for the one in Liverpool, is going to be English in the morning and, and Yoruba in the evening. Very good. That's true. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Then, of course, we do uh, annually. We, we go to, we started this year, we go to Israel for Holy Pilgrimage every oh, year. Nice. By the grace of God, next year, we're going to have two tours in March and then in September. Those who go have the opportunity to have to be baptized in Jordan, where the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized. And then, of course, the couple who go to who want to renew uh, the vows of their marriage mm -hmm. would do that in Cana, in Galilee, where oh, the wow. Lord Jesus Christ the water to the, wine. What, Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful. Amen. Well, thank you so much. We know you run your your um, program on our TV station. That's right. And we just want to say thank you to thank that. You. Thank and you. And for us, to our viewers that are watching, this is Pastor Henry Odeneye. He is the leader of Dagunro Prayer Family, who he confessed Jesus Christ as the head of the family. Mm -hmm. um, he's also the pastor of Yoruba Christian Fellowship. And also, he pastors the Apostolic Church, South Kirkwood Assembly. And he has all these events coming up, come out to support, come out. That Gunduro, however, is in Yoruba. Right. Is, you know, is a way for you to connect to God and with God in prayers, in worship, and in praise. And that is the food God eats, not your Amala. Or in your... <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Bless you, sir. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to your entertainment report with your favorite chocolate drop, Fauzi Aminu, here on My Community on Afrocentric TV channel 15.8. We are having an amazing week here at the studio, and you guys already know what time it is. The tea is still piping hot, the events are still on and popping, and the music is still very lit. So stay locked in. Congratulations to Mercy, who won the Pepe Dem edition of Big Brother Ninja reality TV show. Mercy has become the first female winner of the show, and you guys know I am all for women winning, so I am so here for it. I was rooting for Mike because, I mean, he speaks better, and he might be a better representation of the show and possibly the nation in the grand scheme of things. But hey, Mercy is a baddie, so we'll take it. Congratulations, Mercy. Here for it. Speaking of baddies, where are all the baddies at? <laughs> Big shout out to Fleek Lashes for hooking me up with these super fly lashes. I love my lashes like I love my money long, <laughs> and they got that on lockdown. I love everything about them, starting with the box because I can check myself out in the mirror, the applicators because Issa have used duh, and the lashes because they're fire. Check them out on Instagram at Fleek Lashes. Many of you might have seen a documentary online called Sex for Grades, which uncovered rampant sexual abuse, harassment, and ultimately bullying of students at the University of Lagos and the University of Ghana. It sheds light on the struggles of being a student, particularly female student in African universities, and proves that merit simply may not be enough to succeed in these institutions. <laughs> Have you guys heard and seen these disses between M.I. and Vector? Now they've got an ongoing beef, but this one has to be the one that hit the fan. Okay, so basically, M.I. dropped a diss track called The Viper. In it, he calls Vector out for a couple of things, calls him jealous, says that Vector has helped nobody since he's been relevant, and went as far as saying that he's not even on the list of top five Yoruba rappers. Vector then replied with his diss track called Judas The Rat. Now you know Vector did not come to play. In fact, I don't even want to talk too much about his own. He simply dragged his brother Jesse Jags, claiming, if you're really out here claiming you help people, why can't you help your own brother? 
Now, after all the dissing on the tracks, Vector released some DMs that MI sent to him, and then MI went and deleted the DMs, and then came on Twitter saying, I didn't know we were leaking DMs in our 30s. I'm not really picking sides, but who do you guys is bringing more heat to this beef? Now, you might want to pull your calendars out, because I'm about to give you guys the rundown of the hottest events popping around town. That's my town, your town, and every single town. First up, I have a three-course dining event powered by Sade Eats and Bethany Hadiza on the 19th of October here in Houston, Texas. And if you know anything about these two ladies, it's that they can throw down individually. So together, you know it's going to be madness. RSVP ends soon, so if you haven't already rsvp do so now. Next, I have the fifth edition of the AHBE Awards here in Houston, Texas on the 19th of October at BY Center. Finally, be on the lookout for African Fashion Week Houston, Texas going on on the 21st to the 27th of October here in Houston, Texas. And don't forget to get more information on any of these events and to get your event featured, make sure you visit www.faustiaminu.com forward slash events. The top three songs I have for you guys this week, and of course in no particular order, are Fluid by Amare. Now I love how melodic this one is. I love the softness of it and how the video matches the song. Listen to it yourself and tell me what you guys think. My next song that I have for you guys is Mugbe by Tiwa Savage and Budge. It was my song last week. <laughs> Welcome back to my community on Afrocentric Television Channel 15.8. As promised, this is the show that revolves around the African community in diaspora. In this case, Houston, Texas, which is our hub. And I'm so proud to be a part of um, what we're doing here in, in diaspora, especially in Houston. Today, we will be talking about an event coming up. Um, it's going to be something that glorifies the um, industry, the entertainment industry in Africa. It is an award, award show. It's called the Afro Heritage Broadcast and Entertainment Award, ABIA for short. To talk about that is our person of the studio, Mr. Ibukunle Prosper. Tayo Ibukunle Prosper. Tayo Ibukunle Prosper. You like that Tayo name, T.I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people refer to me as T.I. Prosper. T.I. Prosper, yeah. yeah. Tip. T.I.P. Yeah, exactly. uh, Nice, I like that. So, tell us about this um, um, event coming up. I know this is not the first one. You guys have been doing I remember attending the first one some years ago. Yes. Um, matter of fact, I came to join the group in 2015 that's when it started yeah um and we had a very good outing and ever since then it's always been um an improvement um shalal lania who is actually the new king of um a beautiful village in no no i'll call it a town not a village it's, Ipokia. yeah Ipokia is yeah, a town state. yeah Ipokia is a town um he's the ceo and he's still the ceo he had to go back home this year to become king, but um, the show will never stop. It will never stop. No. So that's one of the things I love about uh, what we call legacy. Right. Um, no matter what happens, the event continues. Yes. So that that shows good leadership. Oh yeah. You know, um, you because most people, if either rich or poor they want to own everything and when that dies or when something life happens to them it, it that event bad. dies yes. right so this is a beautiful one i know um i'll call him hrm his royal majesty uh uh Olani, you know, i i know i've known him for years here in houston and i'm glad when i heard the news that it's transitioning from being our our regular Shalalania to becoming a king. So when we talk about royalty in Africa, mm -hmm. it is real. Some people just don't know it, but you know, they think um, the movie they saw coming to America is um, it's all fiction. No, Africa is not suffering. No, We are good. They're just showing the other side. Just like if you're downtown, you've crossed to the other side of 89, it's third word. You, right. you, you can't well, even believe. When you're in the memorial area. Uh, you would think, oh my God, it's rich. And, and, and that's what we do here. We talk about the rich culture, the heritage of Africa. It would be nice to have the, 
the king on the phone to see if we can we can get you know assure people that yes our king is still alive with us and is ready to um you know to be part of uh the award event coming up matter of fact he has been working endlessly tirelessly day and night sometimes i wonder if this guy ever sleeps because wow he's um, doing nigeria time american time at the same time oh, wow you know so I wow. asked him to call into your program today. Yeah, and I think he's actually live now. I, I think the king is here with us. Uh, Kabiesi. Hello. Hello, Kabiesi. Yes. How are you? Uh, I'm here. I'm doing well. Awesome. Watch yourself. It's good to hear from you. Thanks for calling into our show today. Mr. Tayo Ibikunle Prosper is representing very well here. And we're talking about the... Um, the award show coming up, the Afro Heritage Broadcast and Entertainment Award coming up. So, okay. can we ask how you got started? Well, uh, the event, uh, the yearly event was started, uh, I mean, started in 2015. Excuse my language. And um, we actually have been doing promotion business for quite a while. But it got to a point that we had to move to another level. So came together and then say mm. Okay, I think we lost him for a second there. Yeah. Veterans in the entertainment industry. Um and, do a, a and, and, and that's how Abia came into being. Uh if you look at the crop of people that we bring on board that we honor every year. They're uh, old timers, like the people that started this um, entertainment a long time ago. Right. And people like, you know, them are rarely remembered these days in the regular conventional awards, you know. So we, for example, if you ask some of our, you know, uh, maybe some some of our mates or younger ones, uh, who's Liz Benson? Oh, wow. They probably won't know, remember who that is. Yeah, so oh, people like Benson. that are the crop of artists that we created Abia for to honor and appreciate what we have done over the years. Wow. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, it does. It does. And uh, we just want to thank you. And this is also confirming that um, you are going to join us, right, for the award show. It gets, sure. should be in the U.S. Uh, by Thursday. God's willing. By God's grace. But we look forward to seeing you on the red carpet with your Regal out outfit um, because I know Kabiz you don't go down. Kabiz is our uh, Kabiz is it's a fashionista, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Of course, uh, I'll be there with you guys definitely. By God's grace. Thank you for for calling in, and we appreciate you. And this reassures our people that you are going to be joining us. That, that tells us also that you hold this to heart. That you know just because you're. Your, your transition to greater things does not mean you leave us hanging. Uh, we appreciate you for that. Thanks a lot. And we look forward to seeing you. Thanks so, uh, so much, Mr. Kola. Enjoy the show. Thank you. All right. Well, guys, you heard it live from um, the king himself, the KBAC of uh, Oba of Ipokia, um, HRM Shalao Laniyo. So back at the studio. We will be talking about this event live. Um, who are we expecting this year? Um, we have quite a, a number of good um, legends and icons. Um, our very host is going to be um, Kenny Black. Ah, the crazy Kenny Black. The crazy Kenny Black. He better be, tell him this is Houston and he's Texas. We carry guns, so he <laughs> better be careful why he, he messes us up. Because that guy can't do anything. Yeah, that said to... Um, <laughs> A fellow that oh I'm coming to take your wives. So, uh -huh. so yeah, wives. <laughs> it's so crazy. Yeah, I know. I love I love him. He's a talent. And we have these upcoming Adiza, some actress from Dallas, and another guy. He prefers to be called Onye Onye J or whatever it does. Onye Onye J. Onye J. He he likes it better. He okay. Said, um, that is his um. Um, trademark. 
I like yeah. when people are natural. Yeah. When you're not trying to be, I'm not, and I'm not saying this because you're a Mr. Prosper. Because okay. Prosper is English, right? And that is your name. And I understand that it tells you you're probably a true Lagosian or something like Actually, that. Actually, I'm not from Lagos. I'm from Ondo. Really? But, um, where did you, where did you get Prosper from? Okay, so my name, Longe, originally, mm -hmm. I really don't know the meaning of Longe. I see. So I don't want to keep going on with that. So I asked my dad if I can change it. And so the only thing that could come to mind is prosperity. Ah, yeah, so, so you just I understand. I that. Okay. I will still query you after the show okay. on that because I'm also from Mondo, okay. Elijah precisely. Uh -oh. And then my first cousin is married to Elunge. And oh. then, yeah, so we, we, we'll talk outside this okay. so we don't take people's time. But so tell us, um, you know, we have lineup of people, different categories um, of awards. How many categories do we have? Actually, we don't do categories yeah? um, on this one right here. We do merit. Hmm. Um, we look at what you've... How put, far you have you come. Done, what you've put in, your impact on the industry, you know, your years of... Um, um, entertainment um, within the industry and um, we think and uh, we consider within our own planning group that you deserve a merit award mm. so we make our invent for you to come out to the United States pay for the visas um, to get you know make sure you come Wow out. wow that's a lot it's, it's my 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 mother-in-law's favorite artist is gonna be there um, or do I do I do color we actually we had Odon last year. Okay. We had him last year. We've had um, people like um, Ogabelo. We've had mm. Femi Adebayo. We've had Odon. We've had um, Buki Wright. Um, but this year we're having mostly those guys who are in the English side. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. Um, Zach Oji is gonna be. Oh, nice, here. nice. Zach Oji, Bob Manuel, and Doku. Is I know Bob here. Manuel. Yeah, matter of fact, I think he's in town already. He's just kind of hiding now. That so. makes sense. Uh, yeah, um, I can imagine. We have um, Richard Oniga. Oh so my! He's been very, very instrumental. To nice. The effect of this one right here. Um, we have. Um, What's her name again? Mo Abudu is supposed to be. Oh, Mo Abudu. Okay. Um, Shala Shubuale is supposed to be. Ah, Mama for the boys. So it's like we have, oh, I mean, a oh, list of all of these guys. Um, Okuno. Yes. Raji Okuno is also going to be here. Oh, beautiful. And some of the marketers are also going to be here. Nice. Yeah. So it's going to be a combination. It's going to. I can already tell how it's yes. how lovely it's going to be. Varieties, and then we have. Um, we are honoring people who are going to be here. Who are here too. Who lives in the? Would you call it diaspora? Diaspora. Right? Yes. Um, from Chicago, from England, from somewhere. I can think of it right but all, all South within the Africa we have oh, wow. people from South Africa oh nice who are coming we have a troop coming in from Senegal I love this diversity yeah. it is not concentrated on Nigerians only because this is no. Afro heritage award right. um, so this is going to be on Saturday Saturday 19th October usually October is our month so nice keep it at that um, 19 October is the day on um, Belair Boulevard. Um, I think the address is 11107 Belair Boulevard. 11107 yes. Belair Boulevard. Or the Bees Club. I call it the Bees Club. Yeah, okay, I know where it is. It is the same venue we had um, Alibaba Ali perform. Yes. Um, Two Face, DBR, uh, Fowls, the bad guy. Yes. yes, okay, so that's a very, very lovely uh, venue. Beautiful. Beautiful venue. It has the uh, terrace up there and then the lower. Matter of fact, the terrace is going to be my VIP. I love that. Yeah, I just like, yeah, I want people to be able to see without any kind of. Um, uh, Interference. Exactly. You'll be able to look straight to the to the stage. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So red carpet starts at seven PM. Yes. And then the event proper starts at what time? Nine? Uh, nine o'clock on the door. Nine PM on yeah. the door. No African time. No African, no African time. Because I have um an artist, Alaji Orezi. 
who is going to wrap it up for Arezi. Yes. <laughs> That's my boy. Yes. So um, we want him to have at least some one hour solid entertainment time. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. That's uh, beautiful. That's, so it's just not an award. It's like an award slash concert. Oh, yeah. And Kenny Black is going to kill it. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be awesome. I can already tell. Right. So endeavor to be there, guys. It's uh, Red Carpet starts at 7 p.m. on Saturday, the 19th of October, 2019. And the event proper starts at 9 p.m. So don't be late. The seats get filled up. Does it cost anything to be a part of this, or it's by invite only? Oh, no. Um, well, we're inviting everybody. Everybody within the community can come out. It costs a little bit, just a little okay. to be here. Um, regular tickets um, will cost you $35. Oh, that's cheap for the, you know. The, the, the pack of stars that, that would be there. Yeah, that's yeah. really cheap. Um, I only have limited seats for, for that, though. I only have 200 seats for the regular. For regular. Yeah. So <laughs> 200 seats so for $35, I think that's free. So it's as good as free. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing to see your stars, take pictures, uh, Red Copper is going to be there. You're going to see them live. You're going to, you know, it's. Performance from uh, by uh, Kenny Black and Alaji Orezi. Uh -huh. ha, no, come on, guys. It, it's gonna be really lit. Right. That's the word now, lit, right? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have another so VIP. I'm, I'm going up to ride in the stage. I call it ride in the stage. Okay. Like you're sitting right in front of the stage, so you get to like mingle with the with the stars themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, because what we're planning doing is if you're buying your VVIP, you're like sitting right around the table with the superstars sitting with, with you at the tables, and, and that costs like a hundred dollars per. Six. That's not bad. It's um, a table will only cost you what? If you're buying a table as a group, then I'll give you a discount of one ticket. Oh, nice. Yeah. So if it's ten per, let's say maybe let's assume it's five per table, so it's gonna go for four hundred assumption. If it's yeah. ten per table, it's gonna cost nine hundred dollars. Right. There, that about. comes with um, some. Good stuff on your table too. Yeah. Yeah. Good I stuff. Give, I give you the red wines and I give you the liquor also. Oh, nice! It'd be beautiful. I give you a mixer and I give you a juice. <laughs> Oh, you, you, I mean, you, they've already spent their money on the table right there now. No, right. <laughs> so it's just like getting them over there instead of you going to the club elsewhere or going to the lounge elsewhere. Come enjoy with our star, enjoy our culture, enjoy our tradition, and mingle with our star while you enjoy your money as well. Yes, and it's, it's children friendly? Um, no, not encouraged. I mean, because, I, I mean, in, in years old, yeah. ideal, yes. ideal. So, uh, because you know, our people, we need right. to specify, right? We, yeah. we love for our children, we love for them to meet their stars, mm -hmm. um, also. But this is it's an award show, so it's it's always and it's dressed to dress to impress, of course. There's gonna be a red carpet, yes. What do you what, dress to impress? I mean, my attire is Agbada Yoruba Angel. It's already, you know, flying in my closet right there. But we just want to thank you. Um, um, it's a Beast Club 11107 Bel Air Boulevard. Yes, sir. Um, it's on Saturday, the October 19th, 2019, of course. And the red carpet starts at 7 p.m. And the main event at 9 p.m. Sitting is limited. Oh, yeah. If you don't be there on time, don't let me see you be cut off. Mm -hmm. But that's just what it is. Thank you, Mr. Tayo Ibikunle Prosper. And thanks to KBAC. We look forward to seeing him. We look forward to, uh, you know, seeing the different styles of African attire yes. on the red carpet. That's, it's always glorious. Uh, the right. moment on the red carpet is always glorious. Uh, we, you know, that, those are places where I still designs. And oh, then yes. I can make some for my wife. True. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for this. having us. Well, um, guys, if you're still thinking or contemplating what's going to happen, the whole month is packed. This week coming up, we have Abia Award. That is Afro Heritage Broadcast and Entertainment Award coming up on Saturday the 19th. And subsequently, we have another for one of the movie premieres in Houston on the 27th, it's gonna be on a Sunday to 27th of October, where we have the Coming From Insanity movie premiere. If you need any information whatsoever, reach out to us on info at afrocentrictv.com. Again, it's info at afrocentrictv. Afrocentric is with a K, not C. So afrocentrictv.com. 
Don't touch the data. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You know how all the suicide bumblers are supposed to get badges when they get to paradise? This is paradise. <laughs> Corné a été missionnaire dans plus de 50 pays. Je n'ai jamais vu un enfant avec une telle intelligence. I brought that boy into this house for one reason. To keep this house clean. This is not the end of the world. Even the end of the world is not the end of the world. But it could be the end of the world. I should have done everything for them not to bring into this country. I should have never been home to a night. I should have fought. I shouldn't have done that. I'm working on something. And I will meet you. What's the trail on this? None. They're that good. You have to treat every crime like the crime of the century. You know why? You never know what you'll find. Sports fans, welcome to another episode of Sports on My Community. My name is Bayon Le Arashi. I'm excited coming your way again after it's been a while on the show because, of course, I have to take some time out to take care of some personal need. And of course, I'm back. And of course, back with the best of sports news on my community. And of course, it's the sports segment on the show. Straight to some of the news I have for you this week on the show. The Super Eagles of Nigeria played what I would probably say one of the best friendly matches they played in the past. They played against the Samba Boys of Brazil on Sunday. It was a very, very, very good game. And of course, it was even better because of the results after 90 minutes of that game. It was 1-1 for Ni against Nigeria, for Nigeria against Brazil in that particular one played at the National Stadium in Singapore. You know, Brazil are on world tour, playing different matches, uh, different games with different tough uh, continent, co countries across the continent, of course. And that game was very, very important for the Super Eagles and for the coach, Gernot Raw, as they, of course, intensified in their qualification for the Africa Cup of Nations and the FIFA World Cup in 2022 to find new set of players. Joe Aribo scored a goal for Nigeria in the 35th minute of that particular game. Of course, Brazil star Neymar went off in that game just 12 minutes into the game. He suffered a, what is called a tie injury. It has actually been updated now, say he's going to be out for about four weeks for his football club Paris Saint-Germain in that particular one. But of course, Casemiro, the Real Madrid big midfielder equalized for Brazil in the early minutes of the second half after Marquinhos headed a goal a ball into the bar and of course Casemiro finished it off very well for Brazil. That game ended, Nigeria won, Brazil won. But what, what is your own takeaway in that particular one? I have the highlight of that game on my social media handle, especially my Instagram uh, handle is all at Midas Soccer. You can see, see the highlights of that game there and of course you'll be seeing it right now as I, of course, 
talk about this news in particular moving on now to another great of course one of the greatest to ever play the game of football which we call soccer right here cristiano ronaldo reached a landmark career 700 goal on monday night in ukraine Cristiano Ronaldo's 700th career goal came in in that loss against the Ukrainian counterpart in the Euro 2020 qualifier. Cristiano Ronaldo is 34 years old. Of course, they lost that game to Ukraine, but he achieved something not many has achieved in this game of football. His 700 goals so far have come from 973 matches and he has scored at least once in 458 of those games. He has played. He scored 450 goals for Spanish giant Real Madrid. And of course, he scored 118 for in his early days at Manchester United. He has now scored 95 goals for Portugal in the national team. The only player that come close to Cristiano Ronaldo is Pauleta. I'm sure you remember that Portuguese forward way back, of course, some few years ago for Portugal. Congratulations to you, Cristiano Ronaldo. You deserve everything you have achieved. You are definitely the definition of true hard work. This guy is talented, but of course, he never stopped working. At 34, as a football player, he is still banging in the goal. So keep scoring, and who knows, you might actually beat some of the record of those guys ahead of you. Moving on now to another one. Great news, of course, on the show. But there's nothing great about this particular one. It's about the Euro 2020 qualifier that happened in Bulgaria on Monday night. Of course, I watched that game. I was so disgusted that I had to turn off to the Turkey against uh, Turkey versus France game in that particular one because it was played at the same time. Bulgaria versus England. It was such a sh show of shame by the Bulgarians. The qualifier between them and England was stopped twice. First, in the 28 minutes when the Bulgarians started chanting monkey chants and of course, they also raised their hands up in what is being termed as Nazis salute. You see the pictures right now on your screen right there. But the English boys did what they have to do. They trashed them, of course, by six goals to nothing. Even though the game was stopped twice, they still went on to do what they have to do, beat them right there at their own backyard and show them that football deserves much more than that, that very, very show of shame. I don't want to use a negative word on television, but of course, I am so upset and this cannot continue to this cannot continue in the game we all love so, so, so much. You could see the players, the English players with those looks on their faces, looking so confused and disgusted and sad at the same time. At the same time. But of course, the news have come in on Tuesday morning that the football chief in the Bulgaria has resigned on the call of the prime minister of the Bulgarian, uh, Bulgaria itself. His name... Uh, his name, I can't even remember, I can't even call his name because he doesn't even deserve it. So I'll move on here. Bulgaria, I hope you ever take action against you and I hope this stop from here on. And of course, finally on the show today, Angola, Nigeria, Cameroon and of course Senegal will be representing Africa at the 2019 under 17 world cup which will be hosted by brazil it will be the 18th edition of the biennial men's championship and you know what that championship has brought out in the past Lionel messi which, which player do you want to mention in the in the world of football today that has not been part of the under 17 uh, championship across the world it is being hosted every four four years and of course Brazil is playing host to that one this year. Nigerian under-17 team have already traveled, I think, about a week ago, so the players can be uh, uh, accustomed with the weather in Brazil. But, of course, they travel with, I think, 28 or 35 players. They say they're going to drop it down to the 23 that the uh, tournament requires, and hopefully they will have a fantastic show. One of our best players right now in the Super Eagles, Victor Osimen, was also a product of the under 17 national team i hope there is no age issue this time from any of the four african teams that will be representing the continent in that particular championship that's all i have for you this week on the show hope you enjoyed every bit of it and i hope you enjoy the rest of the show 
Till I see you again next week, God willing, I will definitely be back next week. I assure you that with more news about the under-17 national teams and about under-17 under 17 World Cup and the teams that are going to be participating in it. And of course, giving you information about the teams that have qualified for the Euro 2020 Championship. And next week, this Sunday, it will be Super Sunday, the only Premier League game will be between Manchester United and Liverpool. Will it be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer last game for Manchester United? We'll see about that next week. Till I see you guys again next week. My name is Bayonle Arashi. Bye-bye now.